let's now discuss some additional considerations regarding how the WWC assesses baseline equivalence and how study findings can satisfy the baseline equivalence standard. One important consideration is that a baseline difference of 0.25 standard deviations for any specified pre-intervention measure in a given outcome domain means that all outcomes in that domain fail to satisfy the baseline equivalence standard. This is because outcome domains are typically defined to include outcomes that are thought to be highly correlated. For example, imagine a study was interested in measuring intervention impacts on five outcome measures in the cognition outcome domain. These five outcome measures included abstract reasoning, concept formation, executive function skills, metacognition, and spatial ability. Let's say the baseline equivalence effect sizes for these five measures are 0 0.01, 0 0.13, 0 0.04, 0 0.27, and 0.19. Because the metacognition measure had a baseline difference of 0.27 standard deviations, this is greater than the 0.25 threshold. So this means that all outcomes in this cognition domain fail to satisfy the baseline equivalence standard. Another important consideration is that any pre-intervention measures that are used to satisfy the baseline equivalence standard also must satisfy the same reliability criteria specified for outcomes, which was described in earlier modules in this training series. If reliability information for a pre-intervention measure is required but is unavailable, or if the reliability is below the acceptable level, then the measure cannot be used to assess baseline equivalence. Late pretests are another important consideration when applying the baseline equivalence standard. If a significant portion of the intervention occurred prior to the assessment of a baseline measure used to satisfy the baseline equivalence standard, the WWC will still allow that measure to be used to satisfy the baseline equivalence standard. However, reviewers should note this in their review. If a study provides a true pre-intervention measure, as well as one of these late or intermediate pretest measures, then the WWC will always prefer to use the true pre-intervention measure to assess baseline equivalence. For QEDs, study authors sometimes use propensity score matching techniques to select or weight the units in the intervention and comparison groups. The idea is to use individuals' baseline characteristics to predict how likely a given individual is to have received the intervention. The estimated probability of being in the intervention group is called a propensity score. The authors then often try to match individuals based on their propensity scores to form an intervention and comparison groups to help ensure that the groups are similar at the start of the intervention on those baseline characteristics. The propensity score then may be presented as a summary of the baseline characteristics of individuals. However, studies cannot use the propensity score to demonstrate baseline equivalence. This is true even if the study used all the required baseline characteristics to estimate the propensity score. Rather, studies must demonstrate equivalence using the actual characteristics listed in the handbook, one at a time. This usually will be a pretest in the same domain, but might be other covariates in the case that a pretest is not available. Matching on propensity scores does not guarantee that groups would be equivalent on other individual measures. For example, groups may look equivalent or similar based on the propensity score, but differences in pre-intervention test scores could still exist. So, studies have to use the measures designated in the handbook to demonstrate equivalence. Some study authors also may impute baseline data in their analyses. Imputing data means replacing the unobserved data in some way. The WWC has determined that only certain approaches are acceptable for imputing baseline data, and the handbook describes these approaches. 
Module 9 in this training series provides additional detailed guidance on how to assess baseline equivalence in studies with missing or imputed outcome data. In short, all studies must use an acceptable approach to address missing data. If a study used an approach that the WWC does not consider acceptable, then the study findings will be rated does not meet standards. For individual level QEDs and RCTs, if the study includes missing or imputed baseline data, it must satisfy the baseline equivalence standard using the largest baseline difference under different assumptions about how the missing data are related to other study factors. And any high attrition individual level RCTs that impute outcome data and analyze the full sample randomized to conditions do not need to satisfy the baseline equivalence standard in order for the findings to be eligible to be rated meets WWC standards with reservations. Some study authors may use weights in their impact analysis, where some units contribute more or less weight to the impact estimate than other units. If a study uses weights in this manner, then the baseline means used for baseline equivalence calculations must also use the same weights. Other studies might conduct random assignment within blocks or matching within strata and then include dummy variables in the analysis that differentiate these blocks or strata. In this scenario, the baseline means used for baseline equivalence calculations also may be adjusted using those same dummy variables to differentiate blocks or strata.